Today, approximately 21,000 children will die. You won't see it on the news or trending on Twitter because it happened yesterday and it will happen again tomorrow. According to Anup Shah, 7.6 million children die each year from poverty, hunger, and preventable illness. We have been called by God to serve the poor. He tells us throughout scripture that it is our responsibility as his followers to help those who cannot help themselves. No matter where you are in your life, no matter what your focus is, you have something to offer. It should be an integral part of each person's life to give of themselves to serve others. It could be financial, skills, your time, or advocacy. In the next few minutes, I want to expand your worldview and understanding of poverty. I will discuss our calling to serve, as well as the different aspects of poverty and how to combat them. Finally, we will explore a few different ways you can help this fight. Poverty can be defined in many ways, but my focus today is extreme poverty, which is defined by the World Bank as living on $1.25 or less per day. According to the World Bank, 22% of the developing world's population lives in extreme poverty. Compassion International tells us that this is 600 million children living in extreme poverty. They also estimate that one in five children do not have access to clean water and one in three do not have adequate shelter. Along with malnutrition, these factors are major contributors to underage five deaths. While it is true that every country, including our own, has a poverty line and people who need help, extreme poverty is a different class. In the United States, no one is denied emergency medical care and clean water is readily available. Children in extreme poverty do not have this or even their most basic needs met. We are called in scripture to serve the poor. God makes it clear it is a responsibility. James 1.27 says that we are to look after orphans and widows in their distress. And Acts 20.35 says, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, you must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Nancy Koch has in her article, Poverty and Global Justice, says extreme poverty is one of these great injustices alongside the other evils that have plagued human history. Like these evils, absolute poverty demands a response wherever it is experienced. Koch has is touching on our basic human rights and that as fellow human beings, we have a duty to help where we see evil. Poverty is certainly an evil. Serving the poor is not just a sacrifice for us. It is also a blessing. This service builds for us a treasure in heaven as described in Luke 12, 33, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail. Poverty is not just a lack of money and therefore cannot be solved with only money. Money assists with the symptoms, but it does not cure the underlying disease. There are six, six aspects that must be addressed, according to Compassion International. First is the economics. Families do need enough income to purchase what they cannot grow or make, and they need the opportunity to grow that income. It can be difficult to define what being poor is, as Clive and Kara Bede point out in their article, Recent Christian Interpretations of Material Poverty and Inequality in the Developed World. As they say, 50% of the poor in the United States have air conditioning. So we define the financial opposite of poverty, not as being rich, but as having enough. The next aspect is health. According to UNICEF, 2.5 billion people still lack access to approved sanitation, and 1 billion children are deprived of one or more services essential to survival and development. UNICEF also reports that 148 million under fives in developing regions are underweight for their age. It is essential that, the, that those in extreme poverty gain access to all of this basic health care. Environmental factors tie in with health. These include hygiene practices, clean drinking water, and adequate housing. Many preventable illnesses that cause death in young children come from these environmental issues. The next two aspects, according to Kovanaugh, Black, and Thwaites in their article, Dynamics of Poverty in Developing Countries, help to better define poverty. They say that including social and cultural indicators, such as education, better defines and reflects the well-being of people. Often, in developing nations, it is the corruption of the government that is holding the nation down. Kavul and Bruton, in their article, Harnessing Innovations, 
for change say that in developing countries, dysfunctional institutions act to undermine property rights and promote corruption. How can children grow to make a change if their own nation is devaluing them? Education is a major factor in changing the course of children in poverty. UNICEF reports that 101 million children do not attend primary school. But according to Compassion International, children are very capable of teaching their parents and family members. If they were to gain education and skill training, they could pass it on through their communities. The final aspect of poverty is the spiritual need. Kenneth Ross of the Church of Scotland World Mission Council says that Christian faith offers a blend of hope and realism, which is resistant to disillusionment. Offering that hope to people in their own environment is a gift in itself. Children need to know that they are loved and cherished in order to thrive. Even in the cruel world of poverty, one thing remains true. God loves these children. Teaching them their worth in God's eyes will do so much to break the cycle that they live in. Anne Hunt, in her article, Poverty, Riches, and Christian Discipleship, says the stark reality of poverty in our world reality of increasing inequality globally inevitably leads to questions of the ethics. In other words, there is no question of the growing evil of poverty. So what are we going to do about it? When looking at the global scale of poverty, it can seem like an overwhelming issue. But each person has something to offer that can help. As we have established already, you have greater means and opportunities than the people I described but you also have skills and education that can be applied. There are several ways to contribute to the fight against poverty. One is through missions work. There are many mission trips offered every year that allow you to take your skills and your compassion to the people who need them. As students studying healthcare, you could even commit to time living abroad, so your expertise could benefit those who have no healthcare. You can apply your creativity and intelligence to innovating new processes that provide clean water or make medicine more accessible. Or you can reinvent the processes we take for granted here so they're applicable to the developing world. Finally, you can advocate. Educate yourself on the reality of poverty and share that knowledge. Integrate regular financial giving into your budget. Whatever you can afford helps. And think constantly about what we can do to make the world better for the children who can't help themselves. These children are in dire need and are dying of causes we don't worry about in our everyday lives. Millions die every year and do not have the means to change the course of their own lives. We have a calling as Christians and fellow humans to give of what we have to those who have nothing. There are many aspects of poverty that must be addressed and it will not be solved overnight, but the more people who help, the more children can be saved. Whether you devote your life to the work, integrate giving into your budget, or speak about the issue with others, everything can help make a difference. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this issue that is so close to my heart. I hope that if you learned anything new, you also took away the knowledge that we are not helpless. It can seem overwhelming, but helping even one child can impact their community and go on to impact the world. We have a responsibility established by God to help those who have less than we do. It should be an integral part of our lives to serve the poor, to visit the widows and the orphans in their affliction.